Hello and good afternoon, TV viewers. Welcome to Cross Shorts with Nathan Shan. As you know, Cross Shorts is a weekly talk show dedicated to discussing a variety of topics that are relevant to the social, economic, political, and cultural advancement of Tamil Canadians. Leadership and self-esteem amongst our younger generation has been identified as one of the many areas that we need to focus as a community and need to have much higher focus to improve. So this episode of Cross Shorts, we're going to discuss about a few creative ways and sustainable ways to strengthen leadership and self-esteem among our young people. To discuss this topic of youth leadership, we have three guests with us. Let me begin by introducing them. Kumar Ratnam, who's one of the founders of the youth leadership program uh, as well, and uh, active member of the community. And we have two young people who are actually active leaders in the community through the program and, and various ways as well. So we have Navina Kribaraj and Roshan Nofal. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, so let's get right into the topic. You know, um, you know, a few years ago when I met with uh, some TDSV officials mm -hmm. in Toronto District School Board, they said South Asian students, they didn't have disaggregated data for Tamil, but they had South Asian students who do really well academically. Right. But on the leadership self-confidence level, yes. it's not, there's no correlation. You know, usually yes. you would see they are doing well, their kind of self-esteem and confidence are higher, right. but they didn't see that correlation. They felt that self-esteem and leadership levels are lower right. uh, relatively and that was identified as a need. And we've also seen that as a community, right? Yeah. So what, why is the leadership development an important part for our community as somebody who's championing this? Right, so, so three years ago, uh, you know, we, we, like you said, we've identified this, this as, a, as, a, as a need in our community. Uh, as a parent, you know, I can see that from my children as well, that they are good in studies. You know, that's, that's traditionally, that's what we always uh, propagate within our, our, our children and the community. But in, in the Western world or in any other world, uh, you have to have some soft skills and leadership skills to get ahead in life. Mm -hmm. uh, academics will take you to a certain level, but after that to, to, you know, to become somebody in life, you have to have those skills. Mm -hmm. uh, those skills, uh, most, most of us, most of our, even our children, you know, they are not born with that kind of skill set. Uh, those are, those needs to be taught and nurtured. Uh, so we identified this as a need and, and developed what we call a youth leadership program uh, mm -hmm. from through the organization of Center for Leadership and Innovation. Mm -hmm. uh, we started as a pilot project in 2012 with uh, 20 kids, including my children and, and friends of uh, others. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have grown about three folds over mm -hmm. three years. Mm -hmm. uh, we see the it, it was initially a challenge for us to even to propagate this concept within our community because people couldn't get it. They are like you know why 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 did my children have to learn about leadership? You know, they'll learn anyway when they go and go to work, right? Yeah. So we have we had to go through some challenges and educate the parent community. Uh, then eventually, you know, we, that's one of the reason our growth is so tremendous because then people get it. Mm -hmm. uh, people uh, adapt the concept. Uh, they realize that their children needs to not only they have to focus on academics and culture, cultural arts, but they also have to have build the soft skills to. You know, develop themselves, and 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 that will help them in the university career, and also when they go to the uh, the employment uh, and in work. life as well. Exactly, like, you know, definitely. Family yeah. relationships right. and other things as well, right? Definitely. So yeah. Let's talk a bit about young people. That you are, you know, we can't talk about young people without having young people <laughs> there, right? So it's good that you are here. Uh, what are some challenges? You know, you have peers, and you are probably a, a small percentage of young people who are highly involved, right? There are a lot, lot of young people who are not involved and so on. What are some challenges in getting them involved in leadership themselves, get challenges from their perspective? Let me start with Navina. Um, I think the biggest problem that young people face these days is um, acceptance, and a lot of people don't speak up because they feel like they don't belong or what they say isn't important, so they usually hold it back because of that fear. Okay, so there's a bit of a fear and, you know, would I be accepted? Yeah. Uh, or would people feel it's funny or would I be, you know, ridiculed yeah. or, you know, that fear mm -hmm. of image being sometimes, right? Whatever. Uh, you know how the, concerning the first statistic you said, right, how uh, South Asians, they're doing very well in their academics, but then their leadership roles are not strong enough. And I think that's because the way we've grown and maybe the traditions that maybe our parents brought from back home, wherever that was, somewhere in South Asia, was that, okay, they have a dream set out for us and they want us to live that certain dream. Mm -hmm. And back to what Navina said, is that we are afraid that we're not gonna be accepted what we say. And that's why, leader, but then leadership skills, they're really important though in expressing ourselves because even in school, we're just learning what someone else said, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of the time, perhaps they're Eurocentric, but it's because they were able to give a voice. And now we can change history as well if we give a voice, because it, there's no point in memorizing something, right? Mm -hmm. Because new ideas are always in f people's minds. And I've met a lot of people with many interesting things, but they're too scared to say them. So I think that leadership is very important because we can change the world with it, 
and we wouldn't keep the world as it is current mm -hmm. and um it's just that because we're supposed to be moving forward always mm -hmm. and you know sometimes if you don't get involved to change something somebody else is changing it for you right so yeah. you're yeah. getting the results of someone else changing it for you not necessarily you having to do it. One of the things that you talked about, how family and upbringing and stuff like that, you know, for right or wrong reasons, many of our families, we are told to be humble, not sp speak up or right. not to assert yourself right. in, in, in places like hospitals or, or schools, yes. and, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's one of those things that might have worked earlier, but now, you know, a lot of young people have amazing resumes, but they don't want to market themselves because they're, they're, they're taught to be humble and not to be boasting about themselves and right. so on, right? Yep. Which doesn't work well in the current system here, right? Mm -hmm. So is that a kind of a shift? Uh, it's cultural, but also generational, I think, right? So is that something that you're looking at in your programs as well? So? Yeah, so, so one, of, one of the things we, we encourage uh, within our program is, is more of a critical thinking. Yeah. So the program is not in a lecture style. We, we, it's more of a conversation and discussion, just like the one, the one that we have in here, mm -hmm. is, to, is to create, trigger their thought process and think about things critically, mm -hmm. and uh, and and look at things with a different outside of the box mentality. Mm -hmm. uh, that way, you know, when when they get out from this program and they go in, when they go and face the real world, they can take that process as well. At, at the same time, they can also take this. They are taking this program to their to their parents as well, mm -hmm. uh, which is the benefit of, of re-educating the parents of you know thinking differently. Yeah. yeah. But leadership is is, is diverse, right? It's just not one style. And I think you know. Some people, you know, if you ask who's your favorite leader, they would name their mother or, you know, resilience, you know, how the person cares, how the person runs uh, the household and things like that, right? So it doesn't have to be all like a big hero mm -hmm. type leader, right? So young people, do they, un do they kind of engage in different lifestyles of leadership or, or is it like, is there a focus on one type of leadership more than the other in your, in your circles? I mean, um, right now, we s what we see a lot is that the youth really right because they're the ones with the fresh minds i guess is that we're encouraged to face a lot of the social issues that exist so then i mean the, the idea that i would get when i think of leadership is someone who can make a big speech and like win the hearts of many people and like you know end poverty or something mm -hmm. but um i don't i think for that reason we don't always acknowledge the type of leaderships we have you can ask a kid about who's their leader and they're going to say it's a mom but when you ask a teenager they're going to say it's uh maybe a president, right? Yeah. Or for anything, even a celebrity, because yeah. that's the influence yeah. that they see in their lives today. Yeah. So that's, that's media as well, right? So yeah. um, you talked about critical skills, right? One of the mm -hmm. skills I think mm -hmm. young people are often taught to kind of start sharpening is critical skills when they look at media. Mm -hmm. Because media throws in a lot of images at you, a lot of things at you, right? If you don't have critical skills to analyze it, right. you're buying in as it is, right? So is that something that you're seeing developed yourself from personal experience, but also in your circles that people, do you talk about media or commercials or celebrities in a critical way, or is it like buying into what the media is selling? I think it's important that we look at media in a critical way because a lot of the things that we see online or on TV isn't necessarily true, and that could lead to different you know, mindsets. So when we look at things critically, we get that like, knowledge and we don't believe everything that we see which is really important and that just like opens our minds to new possibilities mm -hmm. so um what's the what's the biggest challenge trying to do this work as, as trying to do the le leadership development work and the the initial challenge was uh, like i said earlier it's, it's about explaining the concept to to our parents yeah. and, and the community yeah. did uh, they send kids with uh, you know I, I ran a leadership program before and uh couple of parents send them with all the math and science books. Oh, <laughs> really? No, <laughs> the leadership that, program, that, right? that so did not happen. <laughs> we, we usually do a parents <laughs> yeah, meeting and we sort of course. explain that. But what has changed, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a physical change that it, we, can, we can factually prove is that when we started the program, like I said, we started with 20 kids, all, for, you know, our children and, and other, other friends' children. So we didn't have a proper statistics or, or the denomination of the population. As we grew, what we saw was over the last three years is we had a, a larger male population in our class. Mm -hmm. Then this year we have almost a 50-50 female to male mm -hmm. ratio. So yeah. what we are seeing is our the parent committee are realizing the leadership role is not a male thing. It also applies to female as well. Mm -hmm. So that so that we are empowering uh, women and 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 yeah. girls yeah. as a byproduct, not intentionally, yeah. but. People are realizing this is a, this is a product that applies to everybody in the community, and uh, right now the population is about 50-50 percent. In fact, so that, you know, you looking at systemic issues of oppression right. for women, it exactly. might be even more need 
to have more leadership opportunities for young women to challenge status quo. Exactly, well exactly. Women, and right. like you said earlier, like we don't see leadership as somebody who leads 100 people or 1,000 mm -hmm. people, uh, you know, expect them to follow them with a shepherd mm -hmm. mentality. Mm -hmm. It's more about critical thinking, innovation, taking initiatives, even working as a team is part of leadership as well. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about public speaking because that's one critical component of it. But though, though it's not always a most important part of leadership, you know, those who may not like public speaking might still be effective leaders. Uh, but public speaking has become an important aspect for success in our society here, fortunately or unfortunately, right? So how have you developed that? And you know, a lot of people are in your circles afraid to speak in public or are they you know, afraid to be on TV or nervous to kind of do a presentation? What's, what's the, what's the um, situation out there? Well, I think um, some people, they're actually, I feel like some people are actually born leaders, right? But it's just that the majority are not. And therefore programs such as YLP and there's other programs that exist for adults even uh, that help nurture these skills. And I think public speaking becomes really important in this world because with increasing competition for anything like jobs or even positions in anything, right? Inf like employment, there's, like I said earlier, right? There's not much to gain from memorizing a book, right? You have to voice your ideas and they're also looking for the, the personal skills you have with other human beings. So, I mean, public speaking, we think of just saying a speech to a bunch of people, right? But in the idea of communication itself, that what's essentially communication is what's really important. Can you connect with others and work with them, right? And then that itself, uh, that lends the idea of a leader as well, a, le a leader as well, mm -hmm. right? You have to be able to make the people want to work, right? Not just give someone a book, tell them to read it and see what they do and be happy or sad with it, mm -hmm. right? You have to make them happy with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So what about from a woman's perspective, young woman's perspective, right? So are, are they looking at uh, leadership in a different s style or different framework? Or um, I think that it's really important that women do become leaders and they do become empowered because we do have a lot to say and especially with YLP we get the opportunity to speak and about important issues. Um, public speaking, relating that to public speaking, I feel like public speaking is important because we can you know, relate to the audience and when the audience can relate to us then we can get our message across mm -hmm. clearly. Yeah. You're both high school students, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, that's good. See, and, and then having high school students having this type of discussion is kind of exemplary as well to kind of others to see that this critical discussion because one of the things we find in our society particularly right. having been a teacher and a, and a trustee right. uh, you know if a young person does something wrong they're penalized like they're adults right exactly. you know right. expulsions and all those stuff yeah. but they're not provided the same level of responsibility and uh, and and kind of the uh, decision making capacity in schools exactly. they're treated like kids when it right. comes to other things yes. but when they do something bad they're treated like adults right yeah. it's kind of a contradictory yeah. thing so right. um, so programs like this can exemplify that yep. um, the question about public speaking and I, I've seen uh, many performances of your team right and you know very young students and yes. sometimes in crowds of like thousands right yes, come exactly. and confidently right. hold a mic and speak and and articulate very con complex concepts right. in very simple mm -hmm. ways right yep. um, how did that happen? Like, what's the what's the main ingredients of, of preparing students for that? Yeah, first to to as you said, first to provide that opportunity for them to stand in front of twenty people, yeah. and when you provide that opportunity constantly and consistently, you know, throughout many many practices and many classes, they build up confidence. Then we put them in opportunities in community events in front of three hundred to five hundred, one thousand people, and and that way they've already built up the confidence so they can deliver. Uh, then on the, on the second side is, is, is public speaking to me is more of a, a component of effective communication. Mm -hmm. So if you can train people in, in communicating well, which is essential in our life, that nowadays like it's not about what you know, about who you know, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to build that relationship to, and so in order to build relationship, you have to have the right communication tool mm -hmm. and the methodology. Yeah, so when, they, when we nurture them through a structured process, uh, through our program, uh, that provide them with the confidence so they can go out and you know deliver, prepare and deliver uh, on, on a need basis. Oh, great. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick commercial break now. When we come back, we're going to talk particularly about a specific uh, project, uh, the idea that you're pursuing using uh, documentaries, video yes. productions and documentaries to advance both leadership but also advance awareness about social causes. So please stay tuned after a few minutes of commercial break. We'll be back to talk about those uh, special documentary productions.